Welcome, all of you folks here. Uh, rookie teams, rookie students, uh, or maybe you just want to come hang out with us, and that's all good, too. Um, so my name is Brian. Uh, actually, I guess we can not do it. There we go. Uh, my name is Brian. I am one of the lead coaches for Team 930. Um, I, this will be my 15th season in FRC. Uh, I was on Team 930 as a student, now I'll come back as the lead coach. Did a bunch of Lego League before that, so been in first a long, long time. Um, in my day job, I'm an uh, innovation R&D manager at a company called Tapco. We make the flashy stop signs uh, that you might see around on, on the roadways. My name's Greg, I'm the same as Brian, just a few years older. Um, and I am a solutions architect at Ionic. Uh, I help make help companies program apps, basically. Boy, this really just doesn't work. And I'm the laptop man. Okay, Greg's the pretend clicker. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so today we're gonna just, it's kind of just a high level of you know what to expect for um, new students, new teams, all those things. Um, some of them is geared more towards, you know if you're a rookie team and this is your first time going through it, um, some of you, if you're on a, a veteran team, but a new student um, can still get a good idea of you know, what things that you should be keeping in mind. So we'll talk about some of the preseason tasks that maybe you already did, and if not, maybe you can get a jump on here in the uh, right after kickoff. Um, kind of go through you know, an example high level se season schedule to keep you on track. Uh, what to expect during the build season. Um, as a drive coach, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't put something in there about drive practice and, and getting yourself ready for competition, uh, as well as just a couple you know, good resources for, for teams to have. This is cool. I'll I just click listen and, for I the click sound, and, and then I'll press it. Yep. And, and do that. So um, here's a, a handful of just some, some preseason tasks. Um, by the way, as we go through this, feel free to ask questions. We want this to be interactive. This is pretty, pretty low key. Um, but just some, some things that we do in the preseason. Uh, to get ourselves ready, and again, if you haven't done those, that's okay. You can do some of those here in the next few days to get yourself ready. Um, deciding on student leaders, I uh, strongly encourage, even if you're a rookie team, brand new, all the kids and mentors are brand new, um, it's a good idea to have at least a couple student leaders on the team, right? Folks that uh, are designated that responsibility to organize things, keep things on track. Um, it could be as simple as just somebody to uh, oversee the programming, somebody to oversee the like making of the robot, fabricating, design, maybe somebody for your business and awards. Um, it doesn't have to be super extensive. We've got a lot of different positions, but you could have you know, three or four, maybe even just two captains to get you going. Defining a couple season goals is good. Um, those season goals for a rookie team might be, we want to have a driving robot at competition, and that would be great. Uh, if you can achieve that, you're already going to be ahead of a bunch of other teams. Um, having a few others maybe about, you know, they could be tangible goals. We want to rank X position at, at the regional, um, or they could be more qualitative. It could be, you know, we want to define a team brand. We want to, you know, um, get ourselves out in the community and have some awareness. Whatever those are, it's good to define a couple of those. Those will help guide you throughout the season. And decide on them as a team so that everybody kind of has buy-in and knows that when a question comes up on like, do we go left or do we go right, you have something to kind of guide you in those goals. Absolutely. Um, setting up a, a calendar, um, so defining a team meeting schedule if you haven't already, of like, hey, when, when, when should we be at the school or at the shop? Um, just so that everybody's on the same page. Put some key milestones in there. Um, you'll see in the next slide about just some example ones, but hey, we want to have the robot like built by this day. We want to be drive practice by this day. Um, obviously your event dates, if there's scrimmages, your, your actual regionals, have those clearly defined so people know like when you're working towards. Uh, tool and safety training, so you know, if you've got a machine shop, if you're just building with hand tools, whatever the case, right, make sure people are, are trained on that um, right away. You don't want to be in the thick of build season and then nobody's there that knows how to use the bandsaw. Um, or that you're working really hard and then you know, an unsafe act occurs because people weren't trained properly. Those are really, really important. Make sure that you get those done right away. And then lastly, just preparing your build space. So organizing your tools, making sure you've got a basic set of tools to, to work off of. Um, ordering some materials, uh, especially it seems better this year than it was last year, but um, some of the key things like control system components, motors, those are still kind of hard to get. So keeping an eye on that and at least getting a basic set for what you might need. Um, first has all that, like the basic control system stuff 
on there. As a rookie team, you're going to get the rookie kit, so you should get a base set of some of those. But um, ordering that and then uh, you know, identifying a practice space. where When you build the robot, where are you going to drive it around? It might be as simple as a little corner of the classroom. Um, if, you can, if you've got a little bit of carpet, somebody's got, you know, they took carpet out of their house and they've got a rug that you can drive on just to simulate the robot on real carpet so you're not testing on like linoleum or tile all, all season and then you get to competition. Um, but I, you find a spot or maybe a different classroom you can clear out on Saturdays and, and practice in there. So here's a, just a very, very high level just uh, example uh, season schedule here. Um, so we're going to get the game today, which is very exciting. Uh, that, that first week is, is all about brainstorm. It's all about ideas. It's all about, um, you know, as a team, discovering what are the different ways to play the game, ways to interact with the game pieces. Um, and, and that's great for, you know, just getting the creative juices flowing. Um, there's a lot of teams that will post things online. I'll show later some, some resource websites. Um, you can leverage what other teams are doing as kind of an extension of your team. Um, just watch what they prototyped and say, hey, that worked pretty good. We're going to try that. In those first few days, don't get attached to a design, especially not like your first one. Your first one is going to be like the obvious one that you guys come up with, and it's great to come up with that, but then keep going. Once you get further, you, you, you want to kind of slow that thought process down, but in the very beginning, just push out as many ideas as you've got because it gives you more to choose from, and the more ideas you get, the more creative they'll be. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, weeks two through four-ish, uh, build the robot. I, I would highly recommend for a rookie team um, to build the kit bot. So this is the first year that first will be releasing not just a drive base, but a, a whole robot design that can play the game to some degree. Um, kit bot, uh, every bot is a program that 118 runs that they design kind of a, a basic competitive robot that's low cost, you know, low resources to build. Um, there's a few other examples out there, but starting from that is, is super helpful because you're going into that robot build knowing this will work. Somebody else built this already and they proved that this is going to work. So it's not going to like miss the game piece because it's built two inches too tall or something like that. Um, and even as a, a you know, 20 plus year veteran team, we're building the kit bot this year as well. We're having all of our new students build that so that they can get hands on experience. By the end of, like, we're building it a little faster, hopefully the end of week one we'll have it done, we've got a robot that can play the game. We can drive practice, we can do all kinds of stuff with that. So we're, we're very big uh, proponents of um, KitBot and, and doing that. Hopefully it's awesome. Hopefully it's like yes. a 1% of robot and then everybody's got it. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, weeks five to six, um, iterate and refine. So this is a great time, especially if you started with that KitBot. Um, to you know, try out, hey, maybe I want to change the intake to be a little bit better. Maybe I want to change the, you know, the end game mechanism to be faster, or more effective. Um, iteration and, and continuing to improve on designs is huge. We preach that throughout the entire season, even through competitions. Um, and you know, by, having, by building off of the, the kit bot, the every bot, you've got that safety net. If, if something you try doesn't work, you can always fall back to to the tried and true proven design. And then start your driver practice. If you, like, once you get that robot, once you get something that can drive, start that practice, start going with it. Um, that's super, super helpful. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> weeks seven plus, basically until your competition, practice, practice, practice. Uh, break, break, break. Yes. Practice, break the robot, fix it, find new, like what's going to work better and not break the next time. Um, this is the time to do it. Uh, as a student on the team, my coach like, would drive the robot into a chalkboard and break it and I'd go, oh my god, Jeff, why did you do that? That's, now the robot's broken. Um, and he's like, I'd rather it break here at the shop so we have time to fix it instead of breaking in our first match at the regional and then now we're, you know, we have 20 minutes before our next match to fix it. So Just be reasonable about breaking it. Don't drop a chalkboard on your robot. Yes. That's not going to happen example. in competition. Don't like break it for the sake of breaking it. Break it by pushing it to its limits. Do what you would do in an intense match, uh, and then see where the weak points are. And then you've got time to again iterate. And all the while, you're you're getting driver practice. You're getting familiarity. Sorry, slow clicker. Slow Lag. clicker. Did that change? That changed. Yes. Um, so, some some just things to keep in mind. Um, 
a lot of this presentation is just me like brain dumping of like what's important. So uh, some things to keep in mind um, during the build season. See how you're tracking to your target schedule. So for example, if you took that last slide and said, all right, we're going to roughly keep to this. Um, it's good to, to check in once in a while. It's, it's really easy to get lost in, in the busyness of build season. We do it. Uh, you know, you're just like, you come in each day and you're like, all right, we got to get this thing done. And like, okay, I just finished, you know, machining out the arm or just cutting this tube to length. Now I got to drill some holes in there. And you can get lost in all those little details. It's good to stop, reflect as a team, say, hey, where are, you know, where are we going? Have we spent a week or two weeks trying to get a certain mechanism to work? And maybe we're, it's really best we kind of hit pause, take a step back, and switch to something else and see if that's better. We preach a lot of iteration in this presentation here, and iteration is very important. But at, just as important is making sure that your robot is kind of progressing as a whole unit. Mm -hmm. So if you're working on, we'll say, an intake, and you're iterating over and over and over and over and over again, and you've got 10 iterations of that intake, and it's week four, and you haven't started uh, whatever scores that game piece, you need to stop and say, this intake could be the world's best intake, but I need to do something with the game piece once it's done. And so being able to understand when is uh, good enough for right now so that you move on to the next thing is really important. And it's hard. It's hard because you really want, I love making things better, faster, 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 but sometimes you got to make other things faster. Mm -hmm. um, like we said, it's, it's okay to change course. Like we do that all the time. We did that last year. We you know, tried our first intake on the cubes last year, and we said, this isn't great. We, we pivoted pretty late in the season because we said, we think this is going to be better for us. And the biggest thing is you got to have that team alignment. Sometimes these are difficult, it's a difficult, you know, decision to make of whether we stick with what we've got or we, we change to something else. Um, and at the end of the day, it's, you don't necessarily need everybody to, to say, this is my favorite thing, but you need that alignment because what you don't want is, half the team saying we're going to change to this design and the other half saying no I like the original one and then you, you have two groups working in two different areas. It's you know this is part of part of real life right part of real industry is you got to make make tough decisions but you need that alignment whether you agree with it or not everybody's got to move forward in the same same direction one direction for your team. Um, review the rules watch the game video periodically we like to uh, a lot of times we'll like the first week of build season, we'll watch the game reveal every day. We come into the mat, come into our meeting, and we'll watch the game reveal again. Because sometimes that second or third or tenth time that you watch it, you'll you'll pick up on something, right? When we watch it all together in a couple hours, we're gonna see all the obvious shiny, exciting things, and our brains are gonna go 100 miles an hour thinking about all the ways to play the game. Once you kind of digest that and you let it settle for a few days, you might pick up on a new strategy or a different like way to interact with the field or game. Um, so watch that. Reviewing the rules, we're going to review them all as a big group today, but especially for rookie students, right, and rookie teams, reviewing everything. Some of the, you know, veterans like us, we, we know a lot of the, the same ones, the evergreen rules, but it's really important that you guys know all the rules, you're building something that's legal to come to competition. Um, and then FIRST does release, uh, I believe it's bi-weekly, game manual updates. So be on the lookout for that. Um, sometimes they're minor. Sometimes it's a you know spelling correction. Sometimes it's major. It's like changing you know what you're allowed to do with a game piece or how many points something is worth. So those can be pretty big. Um, they usually come out on Tuesdays and Fridays. So uh, just make sure that you're on the lookout. Yeah. Um, a couple other things. Uh, you know keep people up to date. Right? Robots is cool. Uh, people like to see this. This is the exciting stuff. So especially, you know, families of, of all the students, right? Um, post on social media, send out uh, email newsletters to, to parents, show some, some pictures or GIFs of things. Um, parents don't like when I send long emails about signups and boring stuff. They like when I put a GIF of the robot, like, shooting a ball. That's cool. Um, sponsors too, right? That, get, get good engagement with your sponsors, the people who gave you money and, and are helping you um, move forward in your season, keep them engaged. That's the fun, exciting stuff. Uh, as well as your community. So if you're, you know, with your school, your school officials, um, you know, other people just in your community, they like to see that stuff. This is really fun and exciting. And last one, have, make sure you take some time to have some, we call them mandatory fun, um, team building events, whatever you want to call it, right? Build season is long. Build season is stressful. You got to take a break once in a while to have a movie night. Uh, go sledding. It finally snowed for the first time here, so you can go go sledding. 
um, you know, have board game night, whatever, whatever it is, go bowling. Uh, do something that kind of takes people's minds off of the work, the stress, the deadlines, and is just building the camaraderie of the team. All right, drive practice. Or not. <laughs> I was doing something funny. Okay. Sorry. Funny drive practice. Um, like I said a couple times already, drive practice. Uh, it's just as, if not more important, than having a good robot. Um, it's been said many times, you can uh, have like good drivers with a pretty basic robot. We'll, we'll do laps around drivers with a great robot that have never practiced before. Um, just running simple drills, we do just like picking up the game piece. I'm like, drive over, pick up the game piece. Okay, do it again, do it again, do it again. It's like a sport. You gotta practice each piece and then you can put those together as you build that muscle memory. Um, so just running simple drills, being familiar with the controls. Don't be like Greg and I when we were in when we were on the team. We were learning the controls in like the first match at the regional. We're like, oh, this button is to make the arm go up because uh, that's the first time the robot would drive, and it was not fun. Um, regionals are expensive, and and each match is worth a lot of money and time and effort. So uh, do as much of that ahead of time as you can. Um, Attend scrimmage and, and like uh, collaborative practices as well. So Team 537 out of Sussex, um, they've held the Sussex scrimmage for, for many years. Um, that's at the end of week six. We'll be going again, we've gone every year. It's a great like kind of pseudo deadline. It forces, you, it forces us to have something that can move there. Uh, and so usually the couple days before the scrimmage is like late nights and you know we're getting everything together. Um, but it gives us an opportunity go out on a full-sized practice field that they have, play with other robots, break our robot, find what didn't work, and then you've still got some time. Even if you're going to a week one competition, you still have a little bit of time then to iterate and improve from there. All right, uh, so other good just resources to kind of keep in mind. Um, so there's more workshops coming up right here in the same room today that you can sit in. There's um, Allison from WarriorBots is going to give a good one on prototyping. Um, we've got uh, like week one programming breakdown, like for more tangible technical skills on, hey, you got to update your libraries and download this and set these things up. There's a lot of little details. Um, so Matt's going to be going over that, uh, as well as Abby's going to come in and talk about just some kind of an overview of the awards uh, that are given out in FRC, some things to keep in mind as you kind of prep for competition down the road. Um, there's also a lot of great just recorded workshops. So we we hold ones at, at MROC, our off-season event. Um, the Wisconsin FRC Training Day was uh, just like a month ago. Those ones are going up online. Citrus Circuits has fall workshops they do every year. Those are really, really good. I highly encourage those. I watch those all the time. Um, those guys are super smart, super successful. And so they've got a lot of great ones, as well as it's uh, from a couple years ago, uh, RSN, Robo Sports Network. They put on some spring conferences with um, some virtual ones with people from like all over the FRC community. So, um, and there's tons of other ones as well that, uh, that many teams have done. So lots of good workshops. I encourage you to, to watch those. Great in the off season. Great to put on if you've got a long drive to robots like I do and you can just listen to it in the car. Um, it's pretty good. A Couple other ones. So these are more just some websites to be aware of. It's cool. It's different on the two screens. Interesting. That's why I'm going to change it because I assume the recording is getting this screen. Okay. There we All go. right. Excellent. Uh, some other good um, things to be aware of. Chief Delphi is forums uh, that have been going on forever that a bunch of people in FRC post. Um, there's lots of, it's a good place to ask questions, get, get help, see what other teams, I mentioned like the prototyping and all that. Lots of teams are going to be posting in there. Um, many teams are part of what's called Open Alliance. Uh, Muskego is part of that. Um, Oak Creek is part of that, where they basically will post at least once a week in their build thread on Chief Delphi. So you can see pictures, videos of what they're testing, what they're designing, what they're trying out. A uh, lot, a lot of good stuff on, on Chief Delphi. Uh, Blue Alliance is kind of an archive of old games, old videos. Uh, basically, it's all the like match results from the last since first was started. Um, and so I'll be giving some presentations a little bit later on like FRC game history and kind of some patterns in FRC games. This is where I pull like all the data from. If we say, hey, it's a ball game, 
we can go look at past ball games, go to Blue Alliance and watch videos from like the championship. What did really good teams design that year? Google is great. Google's your best friend. Like Google's the best thing you can learn out of life is how to Google. Because um, that'll usually get you to any of these other pieces, but also uh, whatever the game is, right? If it's some unique design, if we're like throwing footballs, you go, oh, well, I'm gonna Google like football throwing robot and see what comes up and you never know what you could find. Um, last year when it was cones, people were finding videos of like trucks that would drive on the freeway and pick up cones automatically. And that, like they were using that to do some prototyping. Um, other team websites, a lot of teams will post like technical binders or build blogs or other stuff just on their websites, 254, Citrus Circuits, a um, bunch of teams, as well as some different community discussions. Um, so there's the first Wisconsin Mentor Slack, there's um, Southeast Wisconsin Coalition Slack, um, we have a, a Bear Bites Discord for our, like, our community outreach and, and helping other teams. Um, and there's a bunch of other things out there for like, if you decide to build the EveryBot, they've got a Discord for that. If you're using Photon Vision for cameras, they've got a Discord for that. A lot of those pieces on there. All right, final thoughts here. I know I kind of wrap it through, um, but we'll be around all day long to, to ask questions. Uh, as, especially as rookies, and really this is the like, all the veterans say this and then we're all guilty of not doing it. Um, try not to do too much. Like, it's better to build something that's simple but reliable um, instead of like something that's complex and it could be really, really great, but it only works part of the time. Um, this is my nice way of saying, uh, don't half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing. Uh, that's what I tell the team all the time. Um, it's better to just be really, really good at one thing. Um, if you never have enough drive practice, I sound like a broken record saying that, but it's true. Um, rely on your community, teams around you, right? Down here in Southeast Wisconsin, we've got a lot of really great, great teams, very experienced, a lot of experienced mentors and students um, that can provide help. You know, first is all about gracious professionalism, cooperation, um, and so reaching out locally, reaching out across first, things like the Compass Alliance, Open Alliance, uh, all of those resources. And last but not least, above all else, have fun. We're here to have fun because we like robots and we like competing with robots. Um, so even when it gets stressful, when things are tough, if the robot doesn't work so well at competition, have fun, enjoy it. That's what the program is all about.